This one here did last year. It's got a double take body kit on it. Um, the burgundy one, I did some mod seats front and rear. It has the Mad Jax foldable rear seat on it. Uh, really like this seat with the exception of a couple things. It's noisy. Um, this bounces around a lot, which is great for when I'm storing it in the winter, but it does bounce around. But that being said, I really do like the seat. It has the cooler option that I'm sure everybody has seen. I did put the trailer hitch on it. This thing uh, is pretty awesome. We were trailering. I mean, I could put it on my utility trailer that I tow behind my truck and drive it around. Log splitter. Uh, and then even on Halloween, I put a hay bale, a couple of hay bales in my trailer and we were riding around the neighborhood with it. So pretty cool. I'll throw a pre, a, a pre uh, photo of this one. Pretty much another cart directly off of the golf course uh, and then stripped it down just like the one in front of it and rebuilt this one last winter. Um, original rear bucket thing, whatever you want to call that. I did put new rocker panels on it. Um, I like, I did do a dash on this one too. These are some of the accessory lights. These buttons here, I have two of them that are live. One of them is for an overhead light that's up on the roof here. And then the other one is for the underglow. And then that one might be a speaker someday. This one is going to be for a rear facing light. Uh, I did do the Navitas kit in this one. I hid the on the fly controller in here in this bucket. Um, I'll turn the I'll turn the underglow on so you guys can see. I I threw some underglow lights in here. Uh, and then this one also is on bigbattery.coms. I got a couple of eagles in here. Uh, with the Navitas kit, they recommended at least three, if not four. But, you know, last year these things were $900 a piece. So we went with two for now. Um, they're on sale currently, so I'm probably going to pick up a third. If you're riding around at normal speeds... Normal meaning factory style speeds. The two last plenty for me, just using it in the neighborhood, not going through 18 holes of golf or 36 holes of golf. You know, I'm not really that far from a plug ever, but you start cranking it up. I've hit 37 miles an hour on this cart. And if you're riding around at top speed, it certainly sucks the, the juice right out of them. So I do want to put a third in. There's plenty of room for it. Um, so let me get, let me get this uh, fired up. As far as the lights going and uh, it is winter so we're not outside we're in upstate new york so it's like 30 degrees today i'm not going to be going for a ride with this thing at any point in time right now all right so fired over got the underglow on in there is where i stuck one of the led strips so at night i can see in there those uh little buttons i got on amazon they you can wire them a couple of different ways you can have them light up when the when the button is pressed or you can just have them on all the time i have them on all the time so when the key is on that's when they come on um i wired them to the key and then so you just hit that and my accessory light up there comes on really don't want to drill holes in the roof but so that's why i got a small light the problem with that though is you there's not a lot of clearance when you go to lower the windshield, right? So that's why I went with such a small light. When you're driving it, it feels like a lot of it is bouncing off of that and coming back to you. So it's not as effective as putting it up top. So I do think I'm going to move this one or potentially get a different one, put that one on top. And then I'm probably going to mount this one in the back here. That'll be closer to the edge. It'll go out that way when needed. Uh, and then, like I say, maybe I will just put a, I'll just put a big one up top here. Uh, and then I would like to get one of those sound bars across there too. So anyway, under glows on, uh, on this one, we did a little bit different than the new one. I did polish the frame rails on this one. So took a lot of time, but really do like how it looks. Uh, it, it's good for any color that you then paint the, the cart. So, or body kit, if you buy a body kit. Um, but again, it was a really long time. I'll put a shot of what that looked like as they were laying on my garage floor, but pretty cool. Um, you know, did a full, the next one that we bring up, 
show you guys in a little bit, like the bottom plastic, the main carrier, you know, I got all that painted, cleaned and painted so that everything kind of looks new in here. I did not take this thing mud bogging last year, but it is a full year old now. I just tried to keep it, try to keep it clean. We're running the, I think that's Mad Jacks, right? Uh, three and a half inch lift on this one. I had a Yamaha where I did the six inch and the Yamaha's track is a little bit narrower, so it's not as wide as this, but it just felt so top heavy. So we did a, a three and a half on this one, which really equates to about four. These are 22 inch tall tires. Uh, they, they're actually not a black, you see it now, like the bronze center. Uh, so I tried to tie in the uh, seats with the bronze here. And uh, really happy with the look of these wheels. I might actually be looking at a different set of bronze wheels for this cart here, the new one, and maybe swap them out and put this one on the one that we're building. I don't know, we'll see. Rockers, these are new rockers. They're just the aftermarket ones. Um, you know, in the new precedent, you've got some sort of label that was here. So there was still like this cutout for the label. Found this little emblem thing just on Amazon. It was the right size. I thought it fit nice right there. I thought that looked really just clean. I did recently repolish back here. So, you know, repolished the frame recently, uh, last weekend. I did a little brake adjustment on this one and then just while I had the wheels off, I just did a quick polish over here. So we'll do that to the front shortly. Um, underneath, there's my Navitas. I do wish I painted the axle housing on this one with that same engine paint. It would probably look cleaner. I'm tempted to take it apart and do it because you can, even with the seat down, it, you can't see that pumpkin. So I like it to look as fresh as possible. So um, the one problem that we had with this one You can see where I really couldn't get the electrical panel box back over it. So with all the thicker gauge wire and the larger controller, um, I ended up zip tying it so I at least had coverage. But underneath here still looks pretty good, pretty clean. Uh, not too, too shabby for a year. I didn't drive, like I said, I didn't take it mud bogging or drive it in the rain all that much. So, uh, we're still pretty clean from last year. So rather than polishing this one, um, by the battery box, when the acid starts leaking out, it does etch a lot of this pretty good. So I just kind of chose to, to paint this one uh, in aluminum color. So no matter what color I end up going with, with the body, um, it'll still, you know, do the thing and look new. I guess you could go black and hide it, I kind of like the color variant when you look in here. So that's why I went ahead and and uh, painted it a silver color. Uh, light kit on this thing, it's all, it's inside. So when you flip the regular headlights on, I get that lower light as well. So all of that is factory. I believe, I don't think that comes on. Yeah, when you run the daytime running lights, it's just, it's just that strip. And then for those of you that might not be familiar with the double take kit, it does have signals and then that white bar just flashes uh, amber, which is pretty cool. And it ties in with that lower one too. So and there's with the upper one on. So that's kind of the walk around with this one. A um, couple, of, couple of things about this one though. This dashboard, I they say to rivet it. Uh, underneath here when you're putting the front fascia on. I really, I screwed it because I wanted to be able to remove it if I needed. I don't think that the screwing they did in rather than riveting is causing it because it, the, the plastics are pretty hard. So when you do hit some bumps, like you got, you can hear that, right? Like it's a little bit of my complaint with this front end. Like it, it, it when you're going over bumps, it is a little bit noisy and because it's electric, it's so quiet, you hear all of it. Um, but quality of the body, pretty good. It's only been a year and this chrome is looking like that, which 
I'm annoyed with, but uh, might try and get a different grill. The only thing I use on this is automotive cleaners and microfiber towels. So I'm not cleaning it with, you know, a dirty dish rag. So I don't really know why it would do that, but oh well. So we'll shut her down here. So that's a little bit of the walk around of what we've been building right now.